Hey, what's poppin' guys? Sizzle here. Welcome back to testing out the TF2 arsenal. We test out every single weapon in TF2 to see what they have to offer. And this episode, we're using the Natasha, which I'll explain more when we go find a game. Looks like we're headed off to some classic bread space. And I need to go mute that. That is copyright. I'm sure a lot of people appreciate the late night radio, but when you're a YouTuber, man, you can't have copyright music playing in your videos. That fucks them. And the algorithm. And he's giving out stuff. Cool. Anyway, the idea with this weapon is it takes longer to spin up. So if I hold right click, like, sorry, hold left click, ready. Boom. Like, it takes a little bit longer. It's 30% or something. Uh, you also do 25% less damage, I believe. I don't think it's any more than that, but it's you do less damage. It gets a decent amount less damage. But... Uh, you guaranteed slow people on hit. It's, this is basically, if scouts are annoying you on heavy, pull this thing out, you slow them guaranteed with every single bullet, and they basically lose all their mobility. It's the anti-mobility tool for heavy. It is very annoying to play into. You can also see it has the added benefit of when you're below 50, you have 20% damage resistance, which, you know, it's notable. It's the same upside that the Brass Beast has, and I don't think any other minigun beyond that. Uh, so it's it's kind of notable for that, but I just want to show mainly the difference between the spin-up time. So it's a stock minigun. Ready? Three, two, one. Right? You click, you start shooting. The Natasha, on the other hand, you know, three, two, one, you click. That takes a second. I, I don't know what that guy thinks I'm doing, but... Either way. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder what that guy is up to. That was a cool double combo though with the uh, Haunted Ghost Bubbles. I feel like I go harder with cauldron, ah, cauldron Bubbles, which are green, instead of just, you know, the normal clear bubbles. Oh, whatever. It's also way more expensive <laughs> and less available. You can see right here, right, I'm doing a lot. I, like, normally I would have gotten kill credit by having done so much damage that heavy, but you do have that, like, 25% reduced damage. It is notable, right? The the idea with this weapon is you trade off the ability to kill stuff in two seconds uh, for the upside of being able to annoy the fuck out of anyone, right? Rocket jumping soldiers, demo knights, scouts, uh, even, like, spies and stuff. They just hate not having mobility. It's very, very annoying. Let's go see if we can do something. We have a lot of heavies in our team. It's kind of cancer. As a real player, huh? Yeah, also the longer spin up time to zone problem. You can see that scout, like, could not move. That spy cannot get out. He would have gone out normally, but because we were shooting at him, we slowed him on uh, that. That had an impact. I didn't realize we'd trigger that guy's dead ring or whatever. We got three kills in the kill feed. I was wondering what that was all about. That still can't beat the scorch shot. Most bullshit weapon ever. Yeah, we could just shoot, like, here. Uh, and you just move slower, by the way. When you, when you get hit with it, you get that little... I don't know if anyone here has used, like, the Force of Nature on Scout, but you get that little, like, slow down effect. But because of the slower rev-up time and the lower damage... See, that Scout lived there, but he was only... He was moving slower getting out. The interesting part is with the damage slow, like, on the hit, is there's no, like, fall-off for it. Like if your bullet connects, even if it does one damage, even if it does zero damage somehow, if the bullet hits, it will slow people. It's a really annoying effect. I don't know, is there another? Oh yeah, here's another weapon I can show uh, that effect on. All right, if I go scout and I pull out the Bonk Atomic Punch and I use it up, right, you get your vulnerability, but after the fact, you get a slow effect. You'll see what this effect actually does, right? So I can double jump like normal, you know, all that. But, uh, am I misremembering? Does that not give you slow after it? What? Yeah, damage absorb will slow you when the effect ends, so I actually have to take damage with it. That's unfortunate. Uh, how would I do that? <laughs> Let me just show that off real quick. It's important that you understand why this weapon is solid in any capacity. There we go. You see, I took some damage there from that heavy, and here comes the slow. Ready? Three, two, one. You can see, I can't really move. I can't really double jump. And that's what the Natasha does to you. That yellow little sticky effect you saw on the bottom left of my screen. Every single bullet of the Natasha adds that effect like a tiny amount of time. But if you keep shooting at someone, you're going to keep hitting them, keep giving them that slow. Uh, it also has the added effect of instantly stopping a Demo Man charge. It's like if a Demo Knight's charging around and you hit him with it, uh, then 
just frame one, he can't move anymore. It's very useful for confirming kills and stuff. But I'm gonna go, uh, go cut to the next round and maybe actually show it off a bit more. So yeah, as I was saying... Scout, no. Wrong way. <laughs> The big era. I see. I I just recently did a TFT podcast with uh, Quique, Rain God, and Slide FN, and we discussed Bread Space in it for a few seconds. And I said there was no big era out of spawn. And because I now said that, now I'm looking at it, there's arrows everywhere. There's an arrow over there even, and they're all pointing in the right direction. But on this map, because you face the wrong direction, you just go the wrong direction. That's crazy. Uh, by the way, that for for people wondering when this was recorded, like for timing purposes or whatever, uh, I recorded this two days after the podcast. Yeah, can you get stuck back here? I feel like you probably can't, but I don't. I don't know if I want to risk it. Like, can I throw a sandwich there? Okay, no. Thank God they thought of that. I was gonna say if you could get stuck back there, that'd be crazy. Yeah, let's see what we can do with this thing. I mean, it is a weaker mini uh, minigun, but it also makes it so enemies can't escape, which kind of actually adds up with the damage, especially if you have multiple people using this weapon. Like, if you're stacking a lot of heavies, your damage output's going to be insane anyway, so you might as well have most people using the Natasha, so that you can all just slow down the enemy team, be a big fucking nuisance. This, this weapon is, the whole idea is just be a nuisance at the expense of some damage and some startup time. And the startup time is actually a big downside. I, it might not have looked like it with what I was doing earlier, but like when I got crits, for example, th like, like I said, I think at the time, the scout lived, literally just from that startup time alone. Yeah, it also stops people from approaching you super fast, which is nice. Um, and, and that's that's like another added use kit. This is a crazy combo. Orbiting planets in uh, memory leak is not a combo I expected to see, but it, it actually kind of goes hard. God damn. Oosh. That's a cool one. Orbiting planets is actually a really good combo effect. It's very underrated. But I'm not here to talk about unusuals. Let's get back to, I don't know, using the weapon. I do think I've talked about, you know, all the different many use cases and kind of the functionality of the weapon. Yeah. Sorry, the... Okay, so I said that... I know I said the slow effect would stop an active charge, but that's not true. What the slow effect does is it stops them from being able to charge in the first place. So if it, you see a demo man about to charge, either to charge to get out or charge to get in, and you shoot him and he gets the slow effect, he will he will instantly not be able to charge. Like, if you have the slowdown effect, you can't charge on Demo Man. It's a very interesting little mechanic. Somehow we have one on our kill streak counter, but I don't remember killing anyone. I guess if I get credit for kills like that... Okay, let me get a deal with the sentry. No one else on my team can really do stuff like that. And my pyro wasn't touching. A few seconds. I'm not cool. Yeah, this weapon still is not great at range, uh, just like the base minigun. I know I said it has the slowdown effect at range, and it does, and that's very important to recognize. But it doesn't mean it's good at range, like those are two separate things. The slowdown effect is solid, and it can be used at range. But that's not the only thing you need in the weapon. Interesting, how's that sniper bugged? Like, I, he had his, uh... He had his sign out while sniping people. It's a pretty goofy visual bug. Yeah. Up to a three kill streak. I mean, it, it, like I said, this is still a minigun. It's a weaker minigun, but the minigun is so strong that even a 25% damage penalty doesn't, like, neuter the sheer amount of damage you could do with this thing. It's a very, very interesting side grid. In all honesty. Oh, okay. No one's here. Oh, except these guys. Yeah. There we go. It is always nice when you get like a pocket medic because you are able to get away with a lot more than you definitely should be able to get away with. Oh, random crits. <laughs> Two different people hit me with random crits. I got hit by a crit rocket and then this the man with a minigun right there. 
got rid of Pierce as well, just to finish the job. Because I think I would have gotten out, if I'm completely honest with you. I think if all that happened there uh, was, was that I got hit with the, the crit rocket, I was backing out. I would have been fine. Yeah. 30% slower spin up time, but I think the stop time is the same. So that's it's not like you lose the ability to back out as well. Uh, that is that is a downside of stuff like the Brass Beast. You actually lose both. Am I going the wrong way? No, this is the right way. That spy, though. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> wow. The more I see it, the more funny it is. And here he comes. He comes again. That's funny as fuck, man. Holy shit. He's a relatively new player. And you can see he's, he has a, a tradable after tag in one of his items. That means he bought it off the community market. Can I do anything from here? Like, is someone going to be stupid enough to die to me? I could shoot these people, but I'd rather wait. Patience is key. Hello. Alright. Uh, can I live? I forgot about the explosive green glowing bomb right next to me. Ah, damn. Unlucky. But yeah. Uh, I've kind of showed off everything this weapon has to offer. I went a very solid kill streak with the medic earlier. So I think I'm going to end it off here. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, you've come to kind of understand what this weapon's all about. With that being said, I, I would say I'll see you in the next one, but I'm very curious. What is this guy saying? Oh, okay. There yeah, we got the, the yeast. Makes the bread monster. Bread monster makes the question mark. Is the bread monster all the way at the end? Soldier was here. <laughs> After baking for 15 to 20 minutes, and the exposed individual, the specimen grows the size of a bun and pops out of their chest like a toaster oven. Oh, it pops out of the spy. So the spy, like, ingested the yeast, and then it popped out of the spy's chest and, like, went out after the scout. And the rest of the team was like, you know, next to it or whatever. And they drilled it into one place or something. I don't know. That's an interesting little diagram. Uh, I'm definitely gonna have to censor that image. It's a, a girl riding a chain chomp for those carriers. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.